I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Vampire 2 in the storm now. When I'm battling out, you're the ship that steers me straight to the Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. You got a fun video discussing the topic of Vampire 2 and Daring. Which one is better for your playstyle or for the meta of today? Before we get a like, subscribe button below. Appreciate all the support of the channel. Thank you guys for uh, bringing good comments, great ideas, and just making this a better place where we all can share, uh, you know, make friends, share good ideas, and learn something from it at the same time. And we're going to have fun while we do it. Isn't that the whole point of everything, right? So as always, let's talk about it. The uh, someone had asked me what what do they prefer Vampire Two or Daring or what do I prefer, and it's just my opinion. It's just my take. Uh, you you take with it what you want, and you can either take both ships, whatever, or just yeah, I, I like to use both of them in different scenarios. And TLDR, the biggest thing is it depends on your play style and what you want to accomplish. And uh, if you want to talk about Vampire Two, is a very aggressive cap contester, uh, but requiring a high, higher level of I would say patience and skill. And then uh, Daring is more forgiving. It's more of that multi-role fighter, like I've always said. It's more of just that everyday situation destroyer where you use just like a, kind of like a gearing where you want to go cap, great. You want to go shoot destroyers, great. You want to farm ships, great. You want to go, you have forgiveness of heals, great. And that, that's basically a TLDR of how your play style wants to be. But let's kind of break it down and uh, show different types of play style and see well, what, which one fits your thoughts? Uh, what do you like? What do you prefer? And that's why I, I kind of like these videos. Uh, when I w first started, I watched YouTube videos of you know different ships, and I saw different play styles, and I kind of picked and choose from uh, and learn from many people and many different players and how you can best uh, use those tactics and skills and fit that particular ship to your particular play style. So let's take a look at it. Vampire 2 right here in Arms Race. Again, Arms Race is a little bit more arcadey where you're getting insane reloads, heals, and everything like that, but it is still somewhat fun. And uh, you can notice I've always got RPF located. I got my guns pointed in the RPF indicator, as you can see in the middle of the section of the screen, which is a radio position finder, or now they call it radio location finder. Uh, I, I like the situation awareness. So I know something is there, and I knew it. Yep, there was something there. I'm not going to play around with the Z42. They got six kilometer hydro, as you can see. I'm being lit up, and there's nothing I can do about it. If I smoke up, if I whatever run behind cover, hydro still goes through the the mountain, uh, whatever terrain. At this point, you, this is a great role as a destroyer player. A good lesson here is know when to choose your battles. And you have to know what enemies out there, what their strengths and weaknesses are, so you know when to either egress the area or even try to take the fight head on. So in this particular decision, I made a decision to go, I'm going to uh, analyze the situation go, hey, I, I'm going to egress the area. There's no way I can fight against that many uh, ships in the area, a submarine plus a Z-42 with uh, Hydro. So it's better just to kind of choose that fight. And I know I don't have heals. That's the biggest downside is if you're going to be a DD gunboat man you need to have in my personal opinion heals if you want to go take on ships one-on-one -on -one and vice versa and even try to go in and take risks that uh, require uh, that you'll make a mistake and you need that heal to really mitigate and stop that damage right, so that you can survive the long haul of the battle. And I've always said, as a good destroyer player, you need to survive for your team the, to outlast the battle because you can't do nothing when you're dead, right? So anyways, let's take a look at it again. The Sherman right here. I'm going to make a command decision going, hey, I think I can get this guy in the last couple shots and take him out. And yep, it proves good. Splash one. And that is the first kill of our day right there in the uh, Vampire 2. Notice the guns are very, very quick at reloading. Even an arms race, you can get this thing down to under two seconds. And right that... That right off the bat right there you don't really need any more upgrades outside of that i find that two gun two second gun reloads are very good especially with adrenaline rush kicking in i mean if you're getting in the 1.5 1.6 range of reload like small and reload anything you add on to that like for example the aft uh, buffs or the fearless brawler buffs you're only getting down to maybe you're shaving off 0 0.1 0 0.2 seconds which is on my personal opinion not even really worth it you don't really see much of a difference and really uh the adrenaline rush is more than you can need so right now um i got the rpf locator as a good destroyer player, looking at that direction, trying to find out where that Z-42 is. His hydro outspots mine. So one of the benefits of the Vampire 2 is our hydro is only 5 kilometers. And that's 5 kilometers. That's pretty a decent amount, but not as good as the Z-42. I wish I 
wish I had six. I think that's a lot better. Notice we only have one single torpedo launcher, so that means uh, you only get one set as opposed to Daring has two. But the cool thing about the Vampire 2 is you get it out to 12 kilometers, which, which I think is way more viable. 12 kilometers is a very good, comfortable distance. And these are basic, you know, Daring uh, British-style torpedoes, so whoop de doo They're not, not as good, but not as bad as well. The other thing we have is uh, engine boost. And, of course, the, what you're seeing right now is me using the uh, crawling smoke, which means at quarter speed you can mo continue moving and still be protected by your crawling smoke, which lasts a little bit longer because it's you know following you around. Uh, of course, the downside is if you do move around the map, you are spotted from the moon because you see this big wall of clouds moving, and you're like, huh, I wonder what that is. That's a vampire, too, moving in the smoke. You can easily get radar hydro, and it's just the same as all destroyers. you got to be very careful and use it sparingly. The problem is you can't turn off the uh, smoke at will. you got to wait till it goes out. Uh, now, see, again, hydro right here. wouldn't matter if I had smoke anyways. That hydro is very, very deadly. It reveals me, especially with low health pool. I cannot play around with this so i'm going to go ahead and disengage and get the engine boost get me out of here now the cool thing i do like about the vampire and the daring is it is they are kind of maneuverable look at how I, i'm juking these shells i'm going left right left right maybe play with the throttle a little bit and you notice i'm taking look i mean potential damage is taking up so much because it, this thing really can maneuver very well it's not the fastest ship but it's a very nimble maneuverable kind of a multi-role fighter ship that it, it does everything you need it to do and now if you notice i'm holding my shot right here because i don't i know there's a submarine in the area and i don't want to get spotted right there there are the torpedoes from the submarine. I don't know if he's on the surface or not at the moment, so I, I just want to make sure I don't you know, get shot at by some random person that spotted me. Now, here are those torpedoes I was talking about. Out to 12 kilometers, I launched it at the Burgonia here, and uh, let's see how far I can get it. And I think I got this video. I just wanted to take a look at this. How far do these things really go and touch somebody? And you'll notice, man, these torpedoes... Look at that. They're single launches like the Daring. You have the ability to do that. And they're just, I find the single launches just so random. People don't expect them. And boom, splash two. We take out the battleship from that long range distance. And I did not expect that. You know what? I was just spraying and praying and hopefully hit something and we got something so and always always never underestimate the power of those preemptive torpedo strikes notice right now again we're still low health but in arms race you can get a heal buff and that will bring it back but i'm not going to take that chance and i'm going to continuously maneuver around the cap and i got one of the best concealments in the game i believe uh, anything under six is pretty awesome uh 5.8 uh, again minigumo and Sh uh, shimikaze everything else man they get them down to even lower than this but there are very few and far between because not many ships can do that. Vampire 2 is still up there and one of the best concealments in the game. 5.8 is very comfortable for my book. And for what I'm trying to do, which is really just either be a good cap contester, spotter, uh, maybe a torpedo boat if you want to call it that. But it really the big bread and butter is capping and hunting down DDs in the area. And it really does it very effectively or well. But again, you got to be careful about the pesky radar and hydro like you've been seeing me dodge back and forth. That Z42... I got to make sure he's not in the picture anymore, and that way I can go in and be a little bit more aggressive. Just like in this situation right here, I can pop that, you know, the, this crawling smoke. If that guy goes in within five kilometer hydro, he's spotted, and he can do nothing about it other than blind fire. And then, of course, you also have other people spotting for you. Notice I'm undetected in my crawling smoke, still moving at quarter speed, but I'm able to still fire and, again, maintain relative safety uh, and not get shot at by just random shots from left and right that I'm not really suspecting right now. So. That's the power of the Vampire 2 right there. It's really good for these kind of high-risk situations if you can play it uh, correctly. Hunt, contesting caps, hunting DDs down uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, of course. And, of course, I wouldn't go up against a small one or maybe something heavier because, again, I don't have heals, right? So you don't have heals. You can't correct that damage you're going to take in that one-on-one brawl or even make mistakes where you're just caught in the open and just getting blasted by radar, hydro, submarines, and whatnot. So that's the biggest thing I, um, I have for the Vampire 2. The thing I really like about it is the gun reload. Look at the gun reload now. 1.4 seconds with arms race. You can get it down to one point. The, it's still under two seconds in the other uh, modes, so in the regular random battle mode. So it's really awesome. Just look at the reload on this bad boy right here. Just unloading on the... Ed what is this? The... Oh, Brisbane, yeah. Look, just the amount of firepower you can unleash, and boom, he goes down as well. Splash three, three kills for the game. And again, Vampire 2, very, very deadly. Great gunboat. The torpedoes, like I said, knocking one torpedo launcher down, but it can still reach out to 12 and do its thing, uh, especially with RPF and the Hydro. It is a very, very powerful cap contester and uh, super, super powerful for that reload, and it's just maneuverable and does everything I needed to do. Just wished it had heals. Of course, by doing that, it would make this thing really, really powerful. The other downside is you have to grind this out. I believe it's still in the Research Bureau right now up where, with the Druid. 
Again, this kind of, this is like the sister ship of the Druid, but the Vampire too. It just plays a different play style, different role, and again, it's a grind. You got to grind, literally resetting a line, grinding more, grinding more, and that's the downside of the Vampire too, I believe. Now, here's the Daring. Uh, it, look, similar ship design, same everything, but the cool thing about the Daring is you don't have to grind too much. It's in the tech tree. Everybody has access to it. You can play it to your ten. And I believe it's one of the best starter destroyers out there, like the gearing. It really does everything like you would like, um, similar to what a gearing kind of play style is, where you got decent concealment, which is 6.0. If it was lower like the Vampire 2, it would be even greater, which I believe there is a, um, a legendary upgrade which allows you to do that, but you do take a hit uh, in another department. I just can't think of it what it is right now. Uh, right now, look, you can see the maneuverability is great. Kind of have the quick smokes, just like, um, you know, gearing has longer smokes, but they only got a few of them. You got six to seven of them if you build for it. In the daring, which means you can pop smoke and boom, uh, just go undetected immediately just like that at a moment's notice. Kind of that quick tactical egress. And it's very, look at this, single launch torpedoes right here. I just took a guess and see the Napoli backed right into them. And this is the power of the daring. Two sets of torpedo launchers and boom. Look at that, splash one, first blood, devastating strike. And that is the the power of the daring uh, is torpedoes if you can play them correctly again they only go out to 10 kilometers which means you do have to drive in a little bit closer risk your ship but when they do pack a punch they pack a wallop and they come with a thunder and that is the really cool aspect of the daring now daring isn't much like kind of like gearing torpedoes where they go out to the 16 kilometers or you know the 12 kilometer of the vampire so the daring is more of that close in torpedo kind of standoffish hey don't rush me if i'm rushed i pop smoke launch torpedoes and get out of there that's kind of that hit and run tactic of the daring play style is it a cap contester it can be a uh, vampire too i would agree i would argue that it does like a very very scary more powerful role with that um five kilometer hydro and the crawling smoke so it is a very deadly aspect of that but you can play the daring the same way just in a slightly different manner so it just it just means you got to adjust your play style and play skill Notice I have RPF as well in this, so I know that somebody's to my left. So I'm going to keep my guns facing to the left and make sure that, hey, I'm not caught off guard. And here's that tactic right here, this hit and run kind of guerrilla warfare, I, I like to call it for daring, where you're really just popping smoke, uh, starting fire, you shoot the guns, they start, the guns on the, the daring and the vampire, start, they start so many fires, they're un, they're incredible, very, very uh, earth shattering for battleships, because man, you're, you're just constantly starting fires with this thing, so it's really, really awesome in that regard. Notice the torpedoes are already ready to go again, so I'm just going to launch a wall of torpedoes. I like this whole wall string. <laughs> I like doing stuff like this, where that wall is just really, it's really difficult to dodge sometimes, and if you don't expect them coming. And, of course, again, trying to start fires again. And the AP on the Vampire and the Daring are kind of very, very powerful, and I, I do enjoy it. Being, it, it don't, the, the British AP is super powerful, up to 60 degrees of uh, uh, pen angle, so that's why I do like the aspect of that role, but uh, again, the, the HE shells on the Daring and the Vampire are still very, very powerful and very aggressive, so and I notice also in the gearing, if I'm shooting with HE, you got to be careful because the guns are only 113 millimeter, which means they only pin 19 millimeters on HE, so notice at the midsection of the gearing there, there is a 21 millimeter um, plate of armor, which means it will shatter your HE shells, so you got to keep that in mind with the Daring and the Vampire. If there is a an armor that's greater than 19 millimeters, HE shells will shatter, and of course you're going to have to select that AP to get a little bit better, uh, a little bit more better damage and better contact. So that's the biggest thing. you got to be on your toes with the Daring and the Vampire. Notice the, damp the Daring reload, 2.5 seconds on the HE and the AP, which, which is very good in my, my personal opinion. I, I think that's a decent amount of reload compared to other things out there that could be up to four or six seconds or seven or eight second reloads. Two and a half is very, very good for what it is. Even if you build with AFT and Fearless Brawler, knocking it down just to like a 0.3 or 0.2 is almost, you don't really notice it that much. Here's another example of power of the AP here on a broadside Seattle, broadside yeah, kind of a uh, tier nine cruiser aspect there, uh, the hull. And just look, it, it still can do significant damage. It is a very, very, very powerful combination. Again, I have to give it for both the Vampire 2 and the Daring. Similar style of guns, man, but they do a lot of damage for the AP on broadside light cruisers. And here you go, another situation where if someone spotted, you are literally just switching to HE or AP, and you really are just unloading and supporting your fellow player. Again, the multi-role aspect of the, uh, the Daring is something I do like about it. It can take on destroyers. It can take on cruisers. It can take on battleships. It does everything you needed to do while contesting caps and spotting and torping and so forth so again very 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 powerful i like daring for that regard notice i'm not as aggressive as i would be in a vampire 2 and uh, of course i still have the heels you know uh kind of decent health 24,300 started but with the heels you can get a lot of that back if you make a lot of mistakes you take torpedo damage take whatever and that's something again i do enjoy with the daring it kind of lets you play a little bit more leisurely 
Uh, you're not afraid. You can push the risk a little bit more because you know, hey, I can just heal myself back up and get back into the fight. The Hydro is active. It lasts a lot longer. And uh, if you build for it, but again, it only goes out to three kilometers for spotting destroyers. So really, it's just like an early warning radar. It really just allows you to know, hey, is anybody going to torp me? And that's really all I use the Hydro for in the Daring. I, don't, I, I could rush a smoke, but unless you know you're going to win this thing, uh, a fight, I don't rush a smoke with three kilometer Hydro. Is That's a very, very big gamble. Unless I know that this, the area is clear, I got support, I'll, I'll do that all day long. Again, look, notice starting sh fires on battleships. That's the bread and butter of the Daring. It does a very, very good job of doing that. It's the fire starter of the game. I really like that aspect of it and really it is a powerful thing to really deal with because this thing moves all over the map and you're just starting fires left and right and then when you want to go undetected you just pop the quick smoke go undetected real quick and then you have and then let it go uh, run its uh, duration and boom you got that smoke ready to go again in a short amount of time so I do like the hit and run aspect of the daring it is very very awesome and notice what we're doing as a good destroyer player again we're going in we're capping we're spotting and we're also taking the fight to the enemy also a hey, broadside uh, cruiser right here so switching to AP and let's see if we can get some more into the broadside now the thing about the, the shells at distance they are a little bit arky and a little wonky here so if sometimes it can be difficult if you build for long range guns it's difficult to aim so I don't really go for range anymore on the Daring the Vampire. I used to, but the shells are so wonky and ships these guys are so fast and powerful that I just don't try it anymore. I'd rather just do these close range battles, pop smoke, and go undetected. Again, you can see these uh, sh blind fire shots right into us, and we are taking a lot of damage. Again, you're a destroyer. You don't want to take too, too much damage. The name of the game is just for survive the long run, and that's why we got the heals. The heals just bring back the ship to life and go, hey, I made a mistake right there. Re erase that mistake let's start over and try again so uh, another aspect again i like the daring for that reason and it allows you to go in and be uh, a different kind of aggressive you know vampire 2 was more of aggressive to take on dd's head on and straightforward uh, you notice the daring is more of this hey do i need to push the cap do i need to go in and out uh there's a destroyer there okay maybe i can try a little later i'll come back in move around uh, it's got the maneuverability. It's got the great speed, uh, great acceleration. That is, I'm sorry. The speed is like the, just standard. You know, 36 knots, um, no engine boost or anything. And uh, the Vampire 2 has that in engine boost, which can get it up to a little bit 39ish, 40ish knots. But the Daring doesn't have that. But it, just like the Vampire and the Daring, both share the commonality of being able to go from zero to full speed in a very, very short amount of time. I like that aspect a lot. It's kind of like quick get out of dodge scenario, and I just got to you know, maneuver around and get out of this bad situation. I enjoy that a lot. And again, we're taking fire from a uh, cruiser, Goliath. So again, what we do, pop smoke, go undetected, and now we're going to try and start a lot of fires on this guy. So again, it's very, very good for that aspect. It causes a lot of ships, as a good destroyer player does, is to take that... that death-defying shot, which means that they reveal themselves, they distract themselves, they shoot at a, a, a destroyer thinking that, oh, I'm going to get this nice juicy shot on the destroyer, I'm going to get a kill for the game, not knowing that they have three or four other ships in the area looking at them, and will blap them and erase them off the map. So that's a downside there. We are spotted right now by the uh, Yu, Yu, Yu Yang, and Yu Yang out the Texas, but that's okay as long as we keep driving in, and he goes... Uh, spotted by us again with that quick acceleration I go within his detection range his concealment and I'm starting to unload on my quick firing guns up to 2.4 second reload and uh, these are HE shells I'm telling you they're powerful small caliber gun but do when they connect they really do uh, a significant amount of damage right there and just look at the power right there and boom slash two he goes down we eliminate another destroyer and that is our job as a destroyer player spotting capping killing other dds smoking up when we need to and then uh concealing some of our buddies with the smoke if we need to vampire tricks um you know i pc people do the crawling smoke with other heavy uh gun power ships like schleifens or colbert's and they kind of hide in the smoke with you so that's a tactic you can do right there daring does the same thing you can hide next to a battleship or a cruiser and then you can pop that quick smoke let them have fun for a little about 20 to 30 seconds and then boom we're out of the smoke again and boom we got another smoke ready to go and then another 30 or 40 seconds and boom you're just taking the fight to the enemy providing that smoke cover providing a lot of firepower providing that damage providing spotting and you're doing a lot of these things in the daring and i really really enjoy it a lot because it gives you that flexibility to accomplish every objective that you need to do notice that well, look we're in the front here we're at one of the two last dds and we're doing our job because the other dd is way in the back so we gotta step up and hey as a good destroyer player, we're pushing the fight to the enemy. We're spotting the enemy. We're, we killed all the destroyers now. Now we're out there trying to torp. We're trying to spot. We're trying to cap. We're trying to take potential damage. We're trying to draw a fire. This is a secondary Montana. Yeah, because look at that. Uh, his shells are starting to fire out at 10 and a half kilometers. So unfortunately, I don't recommend a Montana secondary build. It's not as good as you would like it to be. And um, you can see why. They're just not, not as good as dispersion as the Ohio or Schlieven. 
So just look at that. We're start gonna try to get a lot of damage. Look at these this these shells on the superstructure do a lot of significant damage. Even though they're small caliber guns, they do start a lot of fires, like I said, and they have a great reload right there. But that's the end of the game right there. And you can see we just mopped it up uh, for our team up to ninety seven thousand damage. So what do I think? And you can take the build at the end of the screen. What do I think of the Daring and the Vampire 2? Again, I'd say it, it. I like them both. It all depends on what you would like to do. Uh, do you want to, you know, be that kind of aggressive player style, but you got a lot, of, a lot of battles under your belt, and you can take it on the fight to the enemy? Then the Vampire 2 does a really, really good job of taking on destroyers and contesting caps. If you want to play more of that gearing kind of like standoffish, conservative, do everything kind of roll uh, destroyer, then the Daring is a good one as well. And I recommend the Daring first for starters because why you can you can simply grind it. You don't have to spend any money or do anything that much uh, to get it. It's in the tech tree. Everybody has access to it, and, and you can see the build right here in the in the background. And, and the other, the, the problem with the Vampire 2, it re does require uh, a little bit of grinding. You do have to go to the Research Bureau, get the points, and then regrind, get the points there, and then, of course, collect those Research Bureau points to get the Vampire 2. So, again, high cost, high um, demand on playstyle. No heals is the downside of the Vampire 2, but great gun power, great torpedoes, and uh, the Crawling Smoke. But the daring, the daring, I think, is a great starter uh, ship for anybody. Um, I, gearing was my first, and then the Daring. The Daring was a great starter uh, destroyer role to really challenge yourself to figure out what is that play style, what do I do, what are my roles and responsibilities, and I really enjoy that aspect of the Daring, and it answers the call very, very well. And here's an example of that AP I was talking about. Now, it's just a uh, what another light cruiser here, Buffalo, and just uh, kind of like watch what, what the AP can do to a broadside cruiser when you do play it right. Just right into the broadside, they look, twenty four ninety nine right there. And then you got another 2289. I mean, if the, the cruiser sustains this much damage over time, it, it's gone. I mean, you are literally just getting melted by a destroyer from broadside with the AP of the British AP style, and it's really, really awesome and powerful. So, again, what are your thoughts? What do you like to, uh, to play, or uh, how do you like to play Daring? How do you like to play Vampire? Which one do you prefer? Again, I like them both. Again, they just fit different play styles for different roles, different moods of the day. And, uh, yeah, and I really do enjoy both of them. They're a great line, great ship design, and I think they're uh, balanced in every way possible. Possible. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. As always, thanks for those who subscribe to the channel as uh, as well. If you guys want to be part of the community and help us grow, you gotta check down on the bottom, like, subscribe, up below. Got other videos talking about other types of ships and everything, and as well. And if you guys see me out there, make sure you say hi and uh, build a better community. Help me, uh, you know, bring up the conversations, make it a friendly place, great place to learn, uh, grow friendships and relationships. And as always, have a blast doing it. So, you guys stay safe, and as always, take care, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.